Hi, we're out on our range today, and no, you have not won a prize. Now, recently I did a demonstration where I was shooting some shotgun ammunition. The firearm I used for that demonstration was my Rossi coach gun. 12 gauge double barrels side by side with exposed hammers and two triggers. In doing that demo, it brought up some questions from viewers about the technique I was using. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? So today, I'm going to give you a very brief demonstration and explanation of what I do and why I'm doing it. It comes with the caveat that different people have different ways that they'll operate a double-barreled shotgun. And remember, I'm only explaining what I do and why. I am not in any way trying to tell you what to do. Okay, so first, let's take a look at the technique we're talking about. Now, I'm in the field, or practicing for being in the field, and I'll typically have the shotgun at some kind of low ready, often with my thumb on one of the hammers. And when I see something I want to shoot, and then I'll start the reloading process. Now, the question that comes up is, first of all, why is it so difficult to get that one shell out of that one chamber? because this is an old gun and before I owned it, somebody else owned it and that chamber got rusty. I've honed it out, but it's still a little bit rough. That's sometimes why you'll see me putting some effort into getting that one out. Now, the other thing is what you saw here was that as I bring the shotgun up, I'm cocking the hammer as I'm bringing it up, fire, then take it out of my shoulder to cock the other hammer and then fire that. Why don't I cock the other hammer while it's in my shoulder? Because that's just awkward to do. It's easier to bring it out of my shoulder to do that. Obviously, you cock the hammer as you bring it up because that's a lot easier than bringing it up and then trying to cock the hammer and a lot faster. Now, there's a few other things to explain about this. And I want to start with showing you a close up of how this shotgun works. To load the shotgun, I'll push this lever to the right, open the breech, put in two shells, close it. The right barrel is worked with the right hammer and the front trigger. Left barrel, left hammer, rear trigger. The mnemonic device that I use to remind people is you're either right out front or you're left behind. There may be some exceptions somewhere, but every double-barreled shotgun I have ever seen, if it has two triggers, your right barrel goes with the front trigger, left barrel with the rear trigger. Now, if I cock both hammers and use two fingers and pull both triggers, both hammers will fall. But on this particular model, it has an internal safety of some kind that prevents both barrels from going off. Most shotguns do not have such a thing, and if you pull both triggers, both barrels will go off simultaneously. Now that we've seen how the shotgun operates, one of the main questions that someone posed was that as I'm bringing up the shotgun to fire, I cock one hammer, fire it, then bring it down, cock the other hammer, fire the second shot. The question was, why don't I cock both hammers, bring it up, and then fire two shots? Okay, that is a good question. And there's two main reasons why I do that. One has to do with speed, the other has to do with safety. Now the speed concept is that when hunting something that you would typically hunt with a shotgun, birds, rabbits, you very often don't see it until it starts running or flying. And so I can quickly come up on that cocking one hammer. If I tried to cock both, it's very likely to be gone. So to get that first shot off quickly, I just cock the one hammer, then cock the second one as I need it. Now the second one is a measure of safety. Let me show you something. Now in explaining the safety aspect of this, I have to talk about a term called buck fever. Now it could also be coyote fever, jackrabbit fever, goose fever, whatever. And many people are familiar with it, but there's two phases to that. One that most people are familiar with is the pre-shot buck fever, where you panic and forget to disengage your safety or something like that. But there's also the post-shot buck fever. And that really comes into play with most guns, but especially the double-barreled shotgun, in terms of when you cock which hammer. Now, let's say I was hunting soda jugs, and I'm out here looking for a soda jug. I haven't seen one in days. A soda jug. Woohoo! Did you see that? Man, I blew that thing to bits. Woohoo! 
Woo! Let's go pick him up. Anybody ever seen anyone do something like that? Yeah. Now imagine if I had both hammers cocked, therefore I still have one cocked, and I've got poor trigger finger discipline. That might turn out really badly. Now I would like to think that I would maintain my composure a little better than that when I went hunting, and that I might remember to lower that hammer. But these are the kind of things you learn when you're first starting out and you stick with those basics. Another safety aspect of cocking only one hammer as opposed to both of them is when it comes to lowering the hammer. And some of you already know where I'm going with this. When you're in the field hunting with a gun like this, it is very common that you will bring up on something to shoot and then end up not shooting. I'm looking for a jackrabbit. I see some movement. Oh, that was a chipmunk. I'm bird hunting. There's a pheasant. Oh, it was a hen. This kind of thing. Now, when I do that, I make it look like I'm kind of just carefree in doing it. No, there's a very specific set of steps that I go through, and I practiced it a lot. And the steps are, one, make sure your gun's pointed in a safe direction. Two, you get a really good grip on that hammer with your thumb. Three, pull the trigger, let the hammer go forward just a little bit. And four, let your finger off the trigger, ride the hammer forward to its half cock position, or in this case, it has rebounding hammers. Okay. Now, where that comes into play with cocking both hammers at once is in the hypothetical, I'm deer hunting. And yes, some people do hunt deer with shotguns. That's why it's called buck shot in some jurisdictions or for some hunts, shotgun with buck shot is all you're allowed to use. But I see a deer out there and it's in the bushes and I don't know if it's a buck. So I wanna get really ready. I'm gonna cock both hammers. Okay, and nope. It was a doe. So I have to lower both of them. You see the potential for problem there? Let me show you a close up. So I'm getting ready for that deer to come out. Cock both hammers. I am ready. Oh, it turns out it was a doe. Okay, I'm going to lower the hammer. So put my thumb on the hammer, pull the trigger. What happened there? Oh, I put my thumb on this hammer, but I pulled that trigger. Now I'm all kind of, how did I do that? What was going on? And it happens again. So far I've talked a lot about hunting. Just about everything I've said would also apply to home defense or personal protection scenarios. Now, in either of those cases, when someone attempts to engage a target, regardless of what type of firearm they're using, auto-loading pistol, lever-action rifle, double-barreled shotgun, whatever, when they attempt to engage a target and fail to do so successfully, the number one reason for that is that you missed. There's other reasons that you could have a failure, like you forgot to disengage a safety, the list goes on at Astra. But there's a couple of failures specific to double-barreled exposed hammer shotguns. In the field, when someone is trying to shoot a rabbit and they do so and fail to successfully engage that rabbit. Again, number one reason they failed was because they missed. But for double barrels, a very close second is they'll cock the right hammer so they need the front trigger and they'll pull the rear trigger. That happens a lot. Or vice versa, they'll cock the left hammer and pull the front trigger. Now, what some people will do is trying to overcome their difficulty in figuring out which is which, or just because they really want to get ahead of the game, they'll cock both hammers, use two fingers, put one on each trigger. They're not trying to shoot both barrels at once. Now this gun, of course, won't let you do that, but most will. They're trying to pull one, then the other. You know what's likely to happen when you try to pull one, then the other? Okay. Some people will inadvertently pull both triggers at once, and that can be very unpleasant for the shooter, depending on what type of ammo you're using. Some people will pull that one trigger, but then the recoil makes their finger hit the other trigger, and you have two shots go off in such rapid succession that they seem like one. You can also have mechanical failures. Well, let me tell you an anecdote. We're shooting some skeet. 
using a double barreled exposed hammer shotgun, not this one. And a friend of mine is going to shoot this. And he's not really familiar with which hammer goes with which trigger. So I tell him, okay, use one finger, don't use both. But go ahead and cock both hammers. That way, whichever trigger you pull will work. That made sense, except when he pulled the trigger, the recoil was enough that it bounced the sear on the other hammer, and so the other barrel went off as well, again in such rapid succession that it sounded just about like one shot. And when I heard it, did both of those go off at once? Which I really didn't need to ask because he's standing there kind of, whoa! So again, for me, cocking one hammer using one finger and just train yourself to know which one is which is really the right way to go. So again, with my Rossi coach gun, the technique is going to be and then start the reloading process. And sometimes I'll use the rim of one shell to get the other one out because that one chamber can be pretty tight. Such are the idiosyncrasies of this particular gun. So, as always, don't try this at home, I'm what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the Why Do I Shoot the Double-Barreled Shotgun This Way video.